Fortnite Battle Royale has the best crossovers with other games, but Star Wars is one that constantly gets roasted. Darth Vader is usually considered a terrifying villain who you don't want to mess with, but not in Fortnite. Instead of a lightsaber, his weapon of choice is an Imperial Spoon. Because it was so ridiculous, fans were quick to absolutely meme this, and so you'd think Fortnite would learn the lesson, but then they announced Anakin Skywalker. People started guessing what the pickaxe would be, from R2-D2 on a stick to a metal rod thing, and of course they called it. This week Anakin dropped, and I guess he doesn't need a lightsaber with his weapon of doom being a CCTV camera. I know it's canon to the prequels, but still, people have been joking about it non-stop, and it doesn't help that Fortnite's building a reputation for stuff like this. Recently we got Adonis Creed, and considering the entire franchise is about boxing, fans expected him to have gloves for a pickaxe. But once the skin got announced, Creed was wearing gloves, but no one realized these were a part of the outfit. Drum roll please for the pickaxe, a metal stick. I mean, we were all super confused asking how Creed could hold a gun with boxing gloves in the first place. One of the most anticipated crossovers finally dropped with the Attack on Titan update. Fortnite added Eren, Levi, and Mikasa to the game along with two mythics. It sounds incredible on paper, but fans brought up some major problems. The Thunder Spears were hated by the community, calling it actual garbage. The backlash was so powerful, Epic were forced to buff it in the next patch, and that was just the beginning. You could buy the cape back bling, which looked cool, but was quickly roasted for being goofy and just floating on every skin. Not to mention, the collab was supposed to advertise Attack on Titan's final season, where the characters are adults. But Epic didn't make the edit styles for this at all, leaving thousands of fans disappointed and confused. At least it wasn't a total ripoff, because when Balenciaga came to Fortnite, they paired her with a real-life collab that had some nice merch. The designs were simple and looked high quality, like this plain white Fortnite shirt, and that people looked at the price and were left speechless. A thousand dollars for this stuff? Fans were not happy and roasted Epic for agreeing to such an outrageous price. Another design that felt lazy was the Fortnite Football Club. Epic were teasing this for weeks, giving out Funko Pops and jerseys, while celebrities hinted they'd be involved. Well, that's only for the skins to release and immediately get laughed at. They were all reskins of existing collabs. Even the item shop pictures had the exact same pose. When you hear that Fortnite is bringing Tron, Ghostbusters, and Cobra Kai to the game, it sounds amazing. I mean, people were seriously hyped for these. But the one thing they have in common is how disappointing they were to thousands of diehard fans. For Tron, they expected characters from the films, only to be handed some default skins wearing the same outfit. Ghostbusters did it again with generic looking skins that were roasted for being the bare minimum. Epic even designed the car from the movies and put it on the map, only to cover it with a sheet and never talk about it again. I mean, it felt like a huge slap in the face. I gotta say though, Cobra Kai fans got the worst of it when their set was just default skins and martial arts costumes. If you didn't look closely at the logos, you wouldn't even know it was Cobra Kai. Now, luckily, the crossover with Mr. Beast was adored by fans. He got a huge bundle, a $1 million tournament, and tons of challenges. But there was one problem. If you wanted both versions of Mr. Beast, it was 4,000 V-Bucks. Fans now had to choose which one they could afford. Now, people pointed out how other icons had tons of edit styles, but these were separate skins. It didn't make sense to him, and the problems kept coming in his tournament. Epic Games gave $1 million to the winner, and if he came second, you would get nothing. There was no reward for anyone in the top 10, despite all that effort. And the same problem has appeared with the Clone Wars update. Anakin, Darth Maul, and Padme were enough to keep fans happy, but Epic wanted more. They dropped a clone trooper outfit in the battle pass, but you can't customize it. Anyone who preferred a different style had to buy one from the item shop or unlock one of these guys in the premium pass. What could have been six edit styles turned into six separate outfits, and only one of them was free. Now at least they look good. Some collabs have been humiliated over the years for being super derpy, and it's usually cause of cell shading. People like Summer and the Naruto skins look really odd depending on the angle, and Switch players got the worst of it. I mean, look how bad the graphics are. When I looked at Fortnite's past collabs, it's shocking how many people hate the Gugamon set. When he dropped, fans didn't know it was a crossover. They roasted the outfit for being unsettling, weird, out of place, and he is still bullied years later. But the biggest slap in the face was the crossover with Thor, Love, and Thunder. For years, fans were begging for a Stormbreaker pickaxe, and the time had finally come. But there was only one problem. You had to buy everything in the bundle to earn it. Okay, spend a few thousand V-Bucks, and the pickaxe is finally yours. Time to equip it and wait, it's locked? Thousands of people were furious at this and begged Epic to unlock it, joking how even Fishstick used it in the Avengers trailer, but they couldn't. And it got worse with the Fortnite crew. When the subscription released, people subbed to it hoping for original and creative outfits until just one month later when Epic announced Green Arrow. To this day, players consider this one of the worst collabs ever released and the timing wasn't great either. People already burned out from the Marvel season that just happened and another superhero, it was the last thing they wanted. And that wasn't the only time fans 
have been tired of a collab. Cause dropped in 2021 and was immediately insulted by the community. It was just an item shop skin and had a pretty original design, but that didn't stop fans from hating on it for some reason. It makes it even funnier knowing Fortnite came back a year later to annoy them even more with Cause Peely. I didn't think this could get any worse. Who asked for this? Not again. Now at least Cause's return wasn't as hated as Coachella's because the first set was loved by the fans. It got them excited for the festival and the outfits looked great, but it was all downhill from here. When this year's event teased the new collab, people were hyped to see what was in the works, only for it to be reskins of last year. They called it lazy, a cash grab, and the worst part, they were cheaper than the original, so thousands of people paid more for the previous skins. And I just feel really bad for Destro, because he was absolutely roasted by DC fans in Chapter 2. Fortnite were teasing this guy for months, and even put him in the comics just for the skid to be clowned over one thing, his nose. At first, I didn't really notice, but then you compare it to his helmet, and now it's impossible to unsee this. I mean, yes, those is massive and people are so confused that to this day, no one knows why Fortnite did this or why they completely butchered the Matrix collab. It's one of Donald Mustard's favorite movies. He even appeared in them. But for some reason, when Fortnite brought it to the game, the entire collab was a glider, a rap, and two emotes. It's a billion dollar franchise and after months of buildup and excitement, it all amounted to nothing. I mean, fans were not happy. Another film that had so much potential was Free Guy. At the end, he uses Bright Bomber's pickaxe and fans prepared for Epic to return the favor. Well, they did, but instead of adding the main character, Fortnite put Dude in the item shop. Considering there's hundreds of comments laughing at this, they probably made the wrong decision. I mean, everyone wanted Guy, not a random character who's in the film for five minutes. Now, when Fortnite do have popular skins, they don't always hit the mark. To promote Shang-Chi's MCU film, they revealed this skin, and with minutes, it was ripped apart by fans. From completely ignoring the MCU version to straight up looking bland, it took fire from every angle. There was a lot of potential, and they settled with this, but at least it wasn't as bad as Nike Nike's Air Jordan collab. It was so forgettable that most people don't even remember, but it involved two Jordan themed skins, and looking past the obvious ad, people were disappointed at how lazy it was. There were reskins of old Fortnite outfits, and one of them was Morius, a community concept that Epic bought only for it to be turned into an ad. But people were really confused this month when Fortnite announced the most random crossover of all time, branching out into makeup. Revolution is dropping a whole range of Peely themed makeup, from a banana sponge to nail polish, and fans were quick to ask who would buy this. It's not the first time they made a real product that got roasted. Last year, unofficial sunglasses revealed their partnership with Fortnite, and while it sounds cool on paper, the reviews disagreed. All you got was a pair of sunglasses with a cheap sticker on it, causing fans to laugh even more at how random it was. Nothing compares to the disappointment players felt when Bloodsport came to the item shop. His bundle was pretty simple, and most of it included sprays of every single character from the movie. At the same time, Donald Mustard and James Gunn were going crazy on Twitter, teasing Peacemaker as the next skin to drop. John Cena himself joined in and posted this, so hype was at an all-time high, and then nothing happened. All the tweets were deleted, and John Cena was turned into a WWE skin. People still wonder how it fell apart, but it's nothing in comparison to Fortnite's worst collab of all time. In Chapter 2, they teamed up with Quibi and put episodes of Punked on the screen at Risky Reels. Only a few seconds passed before fans were exposing Epic for a blatant cash grab and laughing how Fortnite was turning into an ad. Now, Quibi must have paid a lot of money because they went bankrupt just six months later, and I mean, it was a disaster. Now, there has only been a small selection of live events over the years, but Epic took a gamble when designing a Star Wars one. They had the opportunity to make it one of the most memorable events, and instead, it became one of the most hated. Now, it started off well with Palpatine's message and the Millennium Falcon's grand entrance, but 60 seconds of greatness was immediately replaced with 13 minutes of a talk show. Fans sat there kind of bored as they listened to J.J. Abrams get interviewed about the movie, and the clip they were teasing for weeks ended up being 40 seconds long. Props to Fortnite for continuing to push boundaries and make these live events happen like never before. They have done incredible things, and some of the events are the coolest moments in gaming history. But wow, that event was not it, Chief. And somehow this feeling still holds up years later. Those are 25 Fortnite collabs roasted by fans. If you didn't agree with it, let me know what you think. Anyways, it's been Tommy. Keep it here on Top 5 Gaming.